Hey there, it's Steve Harris at MuseThemes.com. Today we're going to take a look at our new social sharing button. What this is, is it's a way for you to consolidate all of your sharing networks into one simple button. So as you can see, we have kind of a mock-up page here with some dummy copy, and we have the share button. If we click on it, we get this kind of tasteful animation, and all of our sharing networks appear above. So we have the four kind of major networks that you would share on, and then the last one here is for you or a user to send an email to somebody else. So you can see if we click on Pinterest, it brings up a small pop-up, and if you're logged in, which I am, it asks what board we want to share the page on. Uh, if we go Twitter, of course, it says share a link with your followers, and the link that it's automatically picking up is wherever your website is actually published to. So right now, it's picking up the this is the preview link of me previewing it in the browser, but that will be your full URL when you have published your site. So this is a really great way for you to avoid having to embed each of the individual social network sharing code. That can really slow down your site. They're really not stylable. Um, this kind of consolidates everything into one, and it's really simple to set up. So let me jump into Muse, and I'll delete that button out, and let me show you how it works. So if we go to our library and number 26, the social sharing button, and drag that out on the page. So as you can see, it already loaded just the exact button that I was showing you in the browser. And let me move it up here so we have some room. But let's take a look at the flyout panel here. It's quite lengthy, but these are all just style controls. So the first thing we have is menu flyout location. So right now it's set to top center. And if I go back to the browser, you can see that when I click on it, the menu comes out of the middle of the top of this button. If we go back to Muse and let's set this, for example, to middle right, let's see what happens. So if we go File, Preview Page in Browser, always preview it in the browser, and we click on it, now it's kind of coming out with this transition to the right, but as you can see, it's overlapping the button. So this brings us to the second control on the flyout panel, which is the adjust flyout alignment. So right now it's set to minus 100 and you can think of this from left to right. So right now it's moving 100 pixels to the left. So if we set this to say 200, what it's going to do is move basically 200 pixels to the right. And as you can see, this box even got much bigger. So if we preview this in the browser now, and we click on it, you can see that it comes out to the right side. So that's a little bit better. We could probably tighten this gap up a little bit. So let's say we drop the alignment down to only 100 pixels and let's see how it looks. There, so now when we click on it, it's nice and tight along the side. That's probably more what you're going to use. So again, be sure to uh, try out all of these different flyout locations. We've pre-styled basically about, um, let's see, we've got eight in there. And be sure to just always adjust the location of it as needed. So next up, we have text styling options. So of course, you can change the button text. Right now it says share, but we could say social or whatever you want to say in that box. And there is a checkbox here for forcing uppercase text. So it's checked right now, but if I unclick that then it's just going to appear as we've typed in this box now the font name we can type anything in here so we could go Arial, and it's just going to automatically update um, i'm going to go back because i don't like Arial very much okay so then we have text color of course you know what this is this is just a hex value for changing the color of your text we can change that to orange for example okay so now we have the font size which will just control the size of that text and then the next option there is space between text and icon. So this is this gap that you're seeing between the icon and the text. And if we reduce this to say 10, then you'll see that your text will shift over and it's a little bit tighter to that icon. Next up we have our button styling. So this is basically just to control the background color of the button, set the corner radius, that sort of thing. So right now the button color is set to kind of a gray. Let's just change this to dark black. Okay, now in the corner radius, this is how round the corners are going to be. So if we went to say 10, we're going to get really drastically round corners as you can see in the little preview. If we drop that down to zero, we're going to get a perfect rectangle, no rounding on the corners at all. Next up is the icon size. So the icon is this little sharing icon that you see there. This actually uses a font icon. So it's pulled in from a library called Intypo. And if we up that to something drastic, let's say 40, and it cuts off in the preview here, but let's preview it in the browser. 
you can see that now we have a much more drastic icon size compared to the text. And if we go back to Muse here, the, the next option we have is the ntypo.com icon. And then of course we can hide the icon if we don't want it. Okay, so if we just visit the entypo.com website, um, we can basically select any of these icons here. Now, one thing I want to point out is we've done some testing with this on a PC in Chrome, and it appears that there's a bit of a bug where entypo doesn't, or all of the characters aren't recognized. So, although it looks like you have kind of a wide variety, you do need to try and pick and choose a few different ones. So right now we're using this one, but uh, let's select, for example, the star. And so we'll just copy that and paste it right in Muse. Okay, so you can see actually we got a little star here and now in the preview we have a star there. So again, the best way to find out which ones are compatible is to open this up in Chrome on a PC. However, just with some trial and error by just copying and pasting these into Muse, you'll get a good sense of what will actually work with this widget or not. And yeah, that one worked as well. So I think you have a good variety in there. The next thing that we have is the advanced code editor. And so this is kind of a new feature that we've introduced into our widgets. And what this does is it allows you to paste in some custom CSS. So if you're a coder or you have some skills in CSS, what you can do now is kind of inject some code there to override more elements of the widget. I won't get into this deep. However, you do need an understanding of code to use it, and in order to use it, just click Enable Expert Mode, and then you can paste your CSS in there as needed. So that's it. Let's uh, preview this in the browser one more time to see how it looks. And there it is. And if we click on the button, of course, we have our flyout coming still to the right, and we could adjust the alignment a little bit on that in the widget flyout. So enjoy, and I hope this saves you some load time and some frustration in embedding all of those different social networks into your site. Thanks again.